Hello, and uh, welcome back to my book review, a special bonus edition. Today I'm going to talk about a book that was sent to me by its author, a book that was sent to me by my mum, and a book that I found tidying up. We'll start with this one. This is Wind and Solar Electricity um, by a chap called Andy Reynolds. And Andy got in touch with me and asked if he could send me this. I was a bit hesitant at first because I don't want to get into people sending me things that I then feel obliged to review and um, you know obviously the tendency would be to give them a good review because you've just been sent something for as a gift. <laughs> um, thankfully having read the book carefully it is a really good book and so I'm happy to genuinely recommend it. This is a book that I wish I'd had about 10 years ago when I started out with all this kind of stuff. Um, it gives a really good grounding in the subject and I'm going to recommend this book as a continuation to the video that I made on electricity and solar power and things like that because in that video it was intended as a sort of broad introduction to the subject and a lot of people have asked me subsequently for, for more details. Why didn't I provide more details, a step-by-step -step guide and that sort of thing? And that's really beyond the scope of a, of a single video. It's beyond the scope of a, or of a lot of videos. That kind of detail, I think, is, is best off in a book as, as reference. And that's where this really shines. Something I really like about this book is it's written from experience. And like all the best books I've got, like the... Uh, John Seymour's book here on self-sufficiency and many of the other books that I've come across in that in the book review series the most valuable ones to my mind are the ones that people have written based on their own hard-won experience and that's what this book is full of there's a great quote in here on uh, page 14 about avoiding um, the words of low carbon armchair theorists who spout reams of recycled nonsense based on hearsay and not practical experience. And that's very relevant. As, as soon as you start getting into off-grid living, alternative living of any sort, there are a lot of, you'll come across a lot of people that tell you things as if they're facts and they're actually just opinions. <laughs> um, what you want is someone who's actually been there and, and done it and then can speak from, ex from experience. In this book then, we've, we've got lots of detail, lots of the detail that people keep asking me for on the, the systems that you're going to need for off-grid or maybe not completely off-grid even, sort of grid tied, but whatever it is you're after. Um, it describes in here how to set up the system, how to size it for your needs, the components that you're going to need and so on and so forth. The solar side of what's in here is very familiar to me. Um, like I say, I wish I'd come across this type of book 10 years ago or so, and it would have given me a big head start. At some point, I intend to get some wind energy going here, and the other half of the book will become relevant at that point. So that's a quick look then at wind and solar electricity, and I'll put details as ever in the description. But a, a really good book, plenty of detail, and Thank you Andy for sending it to me <laughs> and I'm happy to recommend it. Book number two is a book my mum sent me and it's written by John Seymour, the guy who wrote one of my favourite books, the Self-Sufficiency Bible. <laughs> and this is Forgotten Household Crafts and it's an interesting book because I imagine this to be um, like a, a companion piece to the self-sufficiency guide. It's got lots of details on lots of things that were done in the olden days. And these are things that you would do if you were living, uh, I don't know, homesteading, self-sufficiency, whatever you want to call it. You would have an interest, I imagine, in this stuff, in, in the things, that, the techniques that worked way back in the day when people did just about everything for themselves. Interestingly though, as I read through this, it's not a manual. It's not instructional like the self-sufficiency book is. This is actually quite a nostalgic book. I was surprised at how nostalgic it was. 
when I was reading it and when I looked at the date this was written I, th I think at the end of or near the end of John Seymour's life and he was probably feeling <laughs> more nostalgic so it's written with that kind of tone to it a very different tone to the sort of brisk instructional tone of the self-sufficiency book but nonetheless a really interesting read to dip in and out of each chapter in here is just a few pages long but it's really you can just sit down open it up at random and then just read a bit about coffee making or about salting and pickling <laughs> um, ranges and how they work and it's it's all very interesting it's genuinely interesting and, and well written but not instructional but it gives you a really nice context historical context for lots of the techniques that in a slightly modernized form can be found in the self-sufficiency book it's a really interesting read and and i've been getting into more of john seymour's books recently my mum keeps finding them in charity shops and sending them to me i've got a backlog to try and get through now but having read this one at least the forgotten household crafts i recommend this as a as a really interesting read the final book like i say i come across when i was tidying up recently and it's, it's a book I'd forgotten that I even owned. And this is the Collins Gen version. This is the tiny version. There is a much bigger version. Uh, the SAS Survival Guide by John or Lofty Wiseman, as he's more famously known. Now, this book, the reason I'm talking about this book is because if you have, if you're a young person or if you have a young person, they would probably, if they're into anything <laughs> like, like I am, anything practical, they would love this book. This book is instructional. This is the most instructional book that there is in some ways. This is so instructional that I think if you drop me in the wilderness with a ball of string, my Levmo multi-tool and a copy of this book, I would be fine. You could come back in 10 years and I'd have built a house. <laughs> It really has got everything in here. It's it's um, it's absolutely cracking. The, the sheer amount of information that's been condensed into this tiny book is phenomenal. As a kid, I think I had the bigger version, and it's the sort of thing that I would obsess over it as a, as a youngster, and try and hoover up all this information that's in here, just in case I was on an aeroplane and it crashed and obviously the reality is if you're on an aeroplane and it crashes then yeah you're doomed but um it's always nice to imagine that you're prepared i suppose and and that's what this book did for me as a little kid um lots and lots of great stuff in here if you ever find yourself in a situation that you need to build a bit of whack or um snare a rabbit or skin a deer or <laughs> Sell some clothes out of animals. It, it, you'll need this book. It's brilliant. So yeah, lots and lots of things in here that hopefully you'll never ever need, but just in case. And like I say, if you're a youngster, then this kind of information is brilliant. And it's, it's not how to win a computer game. It's not how to get ahead on social media. It's actual gritty stuff that. Yeah, you're, is it practical? It is practical in the sense that things in here, I think, will actually stand you in good stead in real life. Hopefully you'll never need the actual survival parts of it, unless you do find yourself on a stranded on a tropic island or whatever. But anyway, a, a really good read. <laughs> I really like this book. And I'm, yeah, I'm very happy to have found it again, and uh, I shall be perusing it carefully. So that's it for now. Um, in other news, the website is doing well. Well, <laughs> I've just about got on top of the orders that came through on the first day. Um, it's calmed down a lot since then. So now it's actually a good time to, to order if you're interested in a poker or a candle holder. Um, <laughs> that's about as far as the range goes at me. But uh, yeah, do check it out if you're interested in that. Um, I'll put a link to the website. And I'll be taking orders from my website um, until the beginning of December. So I'll be taking orders as long as I feel I've got a chance of getting them to you before Christmas. 
I'll keep taking the orders in and then I'll close for until the new year. Um, right, well I think that's it for books. <laughs> I'm going to go get back to making things and I'll uh, see you in the next video. Cheers.